Yeah. Yeah. You're live. All right. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to the Ward on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush and Darcy Fequay. Hey, we talk every Friday about something that is so important in our nation, and that is trying to deal with and identify different issues that people have mentally and to make that amazing thing happen. Whoa, I got to turn myself. There we go. So to make that happen, we have dedicated one day a week to talking about, we call it our Feel Good Friday, and we talk about our mental health issues and things like that. And we have on the line with us our expert, Darcy Fiquay. She is a business analyst. She is a Auburn grad, which makes her a war eagle, Christian blogger, mental health advocate. And she claims to be from the deep south of Alabama. Darcy, how are you today? I'm doing great, Gary. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me again. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. I, um, It's one of those things when I went, oh my gosh, we got to have Darcy back on because we are really trying to be good about helping people identify um, what's going on. Depression, anxiety, it's a, it's a hot topic. And I think it's not I don't think it's defined well enough where people kind of can, can kind of get it. And it's like, Oh, that's for the, that's for everybody else. I, I don't have depression, anxiety, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't apply to me. So let's not listen, but this is something that is that's it's in everybody's home. It's affecting everything that we do because it affects people and it may not affect you directly, but it will affect you indirectly. So thank you for coming on today for doing this. Really appreciate oh, it. Um, I'm glad, glad to join you guys. So Darcy, um, one of the things that we had talked about in the last couple of times you're on is about like identi- identifying depression and anxiety. I mean, what do we look for? Uh, you know, what does it look like with people? I mean, do people, and, and then kind of my follow-up question to that is, are, do people suffer from like you know, technically depression and anxiety and not recognize it in themselves? Oh, um, I think that's very common. Definitely very common. Um, you know, it's probably one of the last things you're going to admit if this is like, you know, a first time that I have anxiety, you know, cause it's kind of a little bit of a pride thing and a stigma thing. But what I've noticed with just like talking to people, you know, it's, it's very common. Now, of course, there are many, many, many causes, um, you know, of these disruptions and stuff in your body, obviously, you know, biochemical things can happen, but, you know, just our circumstances, you know, the, the things that we're dealing with day and day, just looking at the news, for goodness gracious, just makes me have depression. Yeah. Um, you know, but mm. I, I do think like, like you were saying, though, a lot of people are w- waking up to this is what I would say. They, they realize, yes, this is not, you know, this is not a place I want to stay, whether it's depression or anxiety and you know, anxiety can be debilitating. I mean, obviously, so can depression. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we want, we want to push out of that, you know, that, that mindset, we want to push out of that mindset and make ourselves healthy and, you know, get back to living. Now, Darcy, so, sometimes I always feel like, I mean, I, I've always felt like, you know, when you talk about the word depression, I mean, it's become to be something kind of really heavy, like, oh, wow, that person, you know, is not just depressed, but they're suffering from depression. It, and it sounds so clinical and it's like, well, that you know, if you have depression, then you've got a, you've got a a really serious problem, but then anxiety to me more sounds like, oh, they're just anxious. They're just nervous about things. They're just, you know, um, they're, they're uncertain about what's going to happen, but it doesn't, I guess to me, and this is, I know this is all wrong, but it doesn't sound like that big of a deal that you're just kind of, oh, I'm just kind of anxious. I'm unsettled. I'm sweating, but, and, and I, but I believe I have that wrong because anxiety and depression don't they go hand in hand? I mean, if it's like you have one, you have the other, they work together against each other. Is that right? Oh, I'm not quite sure that (laughs) that would be the the case. I'm not quite an expert in that, but I know that like, if you live with anxiety, you know, obviously on a regular basis, if it is something that makes you unsettled or like, say for instance, moms after having children, that's Mm -hmm. a very common thing. Um, you know, because your heart is walking outside of, you know, and you, you know, that, the fears and the thoughts that come in through your mind, the intrusive thoughts and stuff like that, that can be very debilitating and overwhelming if it gets to a point to where, you know, you're having panic attacks, you can't leave, you know, maybe you can't leave the house or trust somebody else to watch your child. So at that point, I would think that, yes, that, that, you know, that anxiety would, 
would cause me to be depressed. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I do think that they could go hand in hand, definitely, but not necessarily. Um, you know, I have a, a lot of friends that do have, you know, battled the clinical depression mm-hmm. and they don't really have the kind of like fear and panic that a lot of people talk about with anxiety, you know, those panic attacks. And, mm-hmm. um, I just think everybody has different levels of, you know, obviously of different mental disorders or mental duress, as I like to say, because all of us go through, you know, abouts of what we called funk the other day. We did a mm-hmm. little podcast and we called it, you know, just a week of funk, um, just down, down in my spirits and no particular reason, except for I realized I was just not looking I was looking more at the world and not at God. Mm-hmm. And so I had let things, let things just kind of take me down. And then I realized that my focus was all wrong. And once I started to correct that and focus more on God and all the things that he's doing in my life and the hope he brings, then I began to come out of my funk as we called it. Interesting. I, I love the way you're talking about that. And th- this kind of goes along with I think um, your book, Taking Care of Mom, when you talked about, I, I, I love the one quote in your book where you said, it, you said, Gary, it's a book about parenting well when you don't feel well. And it's kind of like pushing through. And I, as you're kind of suggesting or mentioning is like, you know, as a parent, sometimes being funk, you know, feeling like you're in a funk or that you're feeling down or whatever. It's like, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you don't have a choice, but to push forward. And it's like, sometimes it can be really, really difficult. But you're coming up with this solution, which I really love. You say you you change your focus instead of focusing on yourself and saying, oh, you know, the world is coming apart and I'm just sad and I can't really function today. You start to refocus on God. So if you would help us out, let's talk about how to make that focus, get the focus off of yourself and onto God, onto something bigger than you that makes it so that you can kind of get yourself out of or work towards getting out of the depression. Let's talk about some tools in that way, if we could. Okay, um, definitely. Well, one of the things I always like to do is um, prayer journal. Um, uh-huh. For me, especially as a as a mom, with just having a lot of things, it, you know. And I'm not saying this just as a mom, but that's what I was kind of writing for. Of course, dads. Of course, anybody. Um, there's a lot of honor to do lists. You know, um, a lot of, and not just on our to-do list, to me, I sometimes get overwhelmed by just like prayer requests in general. There always seems to be somebody in the family, a friend at church, somebody's sister, you know, that is in dire need of prayers and asking for prayers. And sometimes I can just write that down in my journal, just write their name down. God knows, God knows what the, what I'm praying for. And that way I've, you know, fulfilled it. I've, I'm praying for them. And I've fulfilled it and I can get it down and then I can move on. You know what I mean? Not necessarily I move on, like that. I'm still going to pray for that person, but I can, it helps me focus. So the actual practice of writing helps me focus. Okay. Um, and I would say one of the other benefits within that is that um, I am establishing more of a relationship with God. You know, when I write my prayers in a diary, it, it helps me in a way to connect more to God and um, it, I can convey positive, negative emotions, fears. I can write about my aspirations or goals. And it just, to me, it builds a bond. And, um, and then I can see evidence of his work. Okay. So so this is, um, so can you, can you help us with a few pointers that kind of some tools that might've helped? Because we're talking about the prayer journal and journaling and writing things down, which I couldn't agree with you more on that. I mean, I, I'm a very faithful journaler. Um, I, I wasn't always. Um, it became easier when I realized I could dictate my journal and make it in a, in a simple way. And I realized how I could simplify my journal instead of doing you know multiple page entries daily, which was kind of getting me like overwhelmed. Um, and, but I, I journal regularly. I mean, literally every day I have a gratitude journal and then I have a journal about my wife and then I have my regular daily journal and I kind of, the three, I write in all three each day. Um, And I'm trying to, you know, from your position, because I know you talk about this a lot about journaling and the prayer journal and like being grateful and all that. Give us some pointers on just like daily things that people can do that might be really helpful. Sure. Okay. Well, you know, one of the number one things is you got to get up. You know, when that alarm goes off, I remember reading a book by, um, on a, it was actually a TED talk and the lady talked about how she was just in a deep depression 
And she said, when that alarm went off, she just did not want to get up. And mm-hmm. so she started counting down. She would count down five, four, three, two, one, like a rocket or something, mm-hmm. and then just boost herself out of bed. You know, so getting up and just getting going. Every day we are given the chance to start over. You know, if you wake up breathing, you're given the chance to start over. So every day is not going to be a good day, but we can start over. And I think one of the things like, you know, just pushing forward means that we have to go through the motions of the day, whether we feel like it or not. You know, the kids, we need to be fed. The kids need to be fed, dressed and stuff like that. And just establishing a routine um, Two minutes. that I've heard um, from some of my therapy friends is just also establishing maybe like attainable goals. So today, um, you know, practical goals. So today I'm not okay. going to say, oh, I'm going to clean the whole entire house. Just say, I'm going to, you know, tackle this two loads of laundry, like make it more because sometimes we put so much on ourselves that we get discouraged, you know, so we need to learn to make more attainable goals when we're suffering with something like depression. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I like go ahead. That. Okay, good. So um, we're coming up against, so I'm going to have to take a break in just a second, but I like um, your, you know, if <laughs> I... I don't know if this is actually your intentional quote of the day, but I'm writing this in my journal. If you wake up breathing, you've been given another day, you've been given another day to start over. Um, that's that's a, right. It's not my quote, but I know <laughs> that's right. Okay. All right. So that's, that's my Darcy quote for the day. Um, I'm giving you credit for that. Um, I love that. And then attainable goals. So on the attainable goals thing, when you are writing those things down, are you, is that going in a, like on a, a goal sheet? Do you have a, a, like a pad of paper you're writing that down on? Is it on a sticky note on your forehead? Is it in your prayer journal? Where do you write down like your, and this is, you've got about 15 seconds, actually no time to answer. Okay, so coming up, sorry. Coming up next with Darcy Fique, you got me, Gary Quackenbush and Darcy Fique. And we're talking about identifying anxiety and depression and also tools to overcome them. Journaling is a big deal talking about that and next we're going to actually i'm going to give you an amazon link for one that darcy loves and we're going to talk about uh, talk about attainable goals and writing things down this is gary quackamish and darcy fique here on the word on wealth you've got questions we've got answers this is the word on wealth with gary quackenbush of gq law gary's here to give you peace of mind with expert estate planning trust administration inheritance and probate call gary to build protect and transfer your wealth 855-500-TRUST gqlaw.com So Gary, we've talked a long time about estate administration. So what is that and why is it important? Estate administration is the distribution part of estate planning. So when someone passes away and they leave money to beneficiaries, the property has to be administered. So it's like taking it from the decedent to the survivor. That's called the estate administration process. So usually you're gonna have a successor trustee that's named in the trust. So have no idea what they're doing because they've never done it before. So then they call on GQ Law and we walk them step-by-step on how to be a successful and good successor trustee. We also do the required notifications. We notify the Department of Health Services and all the legal requirements so that they can have the estate administration done properly. We help successor trustees be successful. Call or click to request your free consultation. GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST, GQLaw.com. You're not alone. Ask for the legal help you need. Call Gary and the team at GQ Law, 855-500-TRUST, or go online and download Gary's free eBooks and videos. Read Gary's blogs. Call or click to request your free consultation or to talk with a member of the GQ team. That's GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. All right. You're listening to The Word on Wealth. We are on our Feel Good Friday where we talk about things of the day that are very important. Today, we're identifying a depression and anxiety. And better yet, we've got Darcy Fique, who is a business analyst and a mental health advocate who is helping us deal with some, with some tools because we're giving you a toolbox, your little toolkit to help out when you are in a situation where we are calling it, maybe it's not a clinical depression, but maybe a funk or you're just down. And, oh man, that's just one of those things. It doesn't matter whether it's spring or summer, it just happens. And sometimes 
it just drives me crazy when it happens to me and it makes me mad and I don't know why I'm just having this funk and things are not going my way and I just get mad. That's my thing, which is kind of sad. And But Darcy's helping me out, helping us out on ways to kind of avoid those issues and how to get out of our funk, our depression. And um, we're talking about attainable goals, like right, get up. Get up and get going are the two things we're talking about right now. So Darcy, along those lines, get up, get going. Maybe you have your, have your countdown. I love how you're saying that. I have a really good friend of mine uh, whose name is Paul, and he, he has to be the, I think he's the most energetic, loving, fun guy. And he was telling me how much he struggles to get going. And I thought, wait a minute, am I talking to the same person? And he says, I just, he says, I literally have my countdown and the alarm goes off in the morning. And he says, I go, oh, okay, three, two, one, go. And he says, I do that with almost everything because it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to change course. I don't want to do this. And so I love that you had mentioned the same thing as like, okay, give yourself a countdown and get going. What a small world. I love that. I love that. So, um, absolutely. So we were just talking about, you know, setting attainable goals. Mm -hmm. So let's just make that say so that is daily goals. So just a daily, what are my one, two, three most, most important things I want to accomplish today. And I think as moms of maybe young children, especially moms, whether you're working or staying at home, there's, you know, obviously stuff that has to get done. We have this long to-do list, but you've got to do your top three. I've heard about that just in business too. Your top three for the day, if nothing else gets done, you know, if you got the top one or two done, then you are a success for the day. So, but make them simple, make them achievable. And I just write mine down on a little notepad, one of those little notepads that sticks to the fridge. Okay. Um, but I also love to highlight the little, um, what is it called? The post-its, because you uh -huh. can put that on your mirror. I, I like to do those with little inspirational quotes, you know, and just stick little inspirational quotes in my mirror. But one of the things about achieving, let's say you are staying at home and you've got some young children, don't feel guilty. If it's very important that the kitchen is clean to you, that's one of the things for me. It's important. I, I do let it go on occasion, but I, the kids will watch TV for the 20 minutes that it takes for me. Do not feel guilty about that. So don't feel guilty about achieving your top one or two when it means that your kids have to watch TV or play on their own. You know, that that's okay. So take the guilt out of that. Um, and then reward yourself. Um, I kind of did this with like working out, which I'll be honest with you, I failed. <laughs> I started like a little six week workout thing. And I was like, if I do it every, you know, when I'm supposed to, then at the end of six weeks, I'm going to get me those new black tennis shoes I want. Now I can afford and pay for the black tennis shoes today, uh -huh. but I wanted to reward myself. So I set this goal, which I failed. So I'm going to have to start again. And then when I get to the end of the goal, I get to reward myself. And you can do that just on a kind of, you know, like just a simple weekly thing, reward yourself with, you know, maybe going out for coffee with your friend, you know, or something, just mm -hmm. something simple like that. So um, some other very simple things, obviously is nature, get out, get outside, you know, just, walk if you're not into you know any kind of heavy exercise like me just get outside and walk mm -hmm. and I would say one of my most important things is to kill the social um the social media I know that we have talked about that a lot it's it's talked a lot about just how much time we're on the phone how much time we're on the internet you know mm -hmm. if it's really not constructive to your healing um if you're looking to the world I know that was one of my things I look to the world and I'm comparing myself to others seeing them achieve goals before you know the kind of goals that I want to achieve mm -hmm. and so I actually didn't get rid of my social media because of my writing but I fill it so much with um I follow all these other Christian writers and authors and speakers that now all my feed that's all I see I, I see so you know you can kind of trick the algorithms I guess to say if you're interested in photography then follow a bunch of photographers and you'll see that that is what is on your feed more instead of paying attention to the grass is greener on the other side. Interesting. I love that. That's I, I um, so we got some good points here. I want to go. So we're, as far as like the goals and it, some people I, I've actually talked to people um, in their 20s who say you have a to do list. That's so, so, so like old school. I went, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I have a I, I have a to do <laughs> list. I I do. And. I run a successful company and have for 
33 years. And yeah, you're right. The to-do list is important. Oh, that's so old school. I said, well, how do you keep track of it? Oh, I just do what comes up next. It's like, okay, tell me how that goes for the next five years. And then and let, let's talk about that. But it seems like um, I feel that sometimes we get a lot of, I don't know, some people are just trying to push against whatever system there is. There's kind of this pushback thing. Like, it doesn't matter what system, it's just like, oh, if that's a system, if that's kind of what people do, if that's kind of a thing, then I'm different, I'm unique, I'm special, I'm important, I'm entitled, and I'm just gonna push back against whatever it is that somebody says is a thing. And I, I to me, it surprises me a little bit. Like, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I, I don't exercise, that's what my dad does, or I don't do to-do lists because that just seems so, so, you know, I just, I just remember things. I have a great memory, but then it's really not true. When you get right down to it, they forget a lot, you know, because, it, because it's not in their memory and then they don't remember that they remember. So they don't think they forgot, but I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, a list maker. Unfortunately, I do too much list making and I'm liking what you're telling me about making sure that I, I, I have to kind of triage my goals and my to-dos there's just so many each day that I have, I, I get to where I can feel like completely overwhelmed with, okay, there's just so much to do. What do I do? You know, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go outside and just walk around for the rest of the day. Cause I'm so, I don't want to think. Um, and that's, yeah. uh, it's helpful. What you're saying is that you know, if I dive back into social media, it's like, it's really easy to lose time. And I mean, just time itself, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, uh, just because you kind of go, oh, wow, that's really interesting. And you start to realize that's what the algorithms are doing is saying, oh, Gary's interested in this. And he looked at that for three seconds longer than he looked at this. So let's take down that, you know, and here's, oh, here's another one. Here's another one. And you, you find 30 minutes later, it's like, oh my gosh, I am so mad at myself because I just did that big waste of time. But if I do a to-do list, I can avoid that if I stay focused on it. Um, I, I completely agree. I have a long to do list for work, especially, mm -hmm. you know, um, and if I, if I, but I still prioritize it because I say, you know, today this really has to get done. Mm -hmm. So this does come ahead. Like, I like what you said, triage, triage the to do list. And some things seem to carry over from week to week. I wish I didn't have those little ones that carry over. I know. But do like you, ever, you said, do you ever I find would, a list? Waste, do you ever find a list that you're digging through piles of old paper? You find a list and you go, oh my gosh. I did that and check it off right before you throw it in the trash. <laughs> I think we have our own diseases. The, the to-do list check off. That's so yes, bad. Sir. That's so funny. I, I, I'm kind of in this throwaway mode now. And it's like, I, I went through a list of, I can't believe it. I really did. I found a to-do list and I went through the, I went and I checked off everything and then I threw the list in the trash. Anyway. <laughs> There okay, you, you might need to seek some help for that, some professional help for that. <laughs> That's why I have you. That's why I have my Fridays. No, no, no. You think this is for I'm the listeners? I'm not a professional. <laughs> oh my yes, gosh. Sir. Talk to us about journaling more. I want to know, you You sent me a link that I'm absolutely, I'm intrigued with. And you said, Gary, this one's good for guys. So you sent me an Amazon link and it's the prayer map for men. Yes, I love it. I was just looking at that. I mean, I might get one of those myself, but I like how it kind of like it guides us because sometimes when we're staring at a blank piece of paper, it's like a little intimidating. If, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it is a little bit. So I like how it just kind of guides you into like different parts, you know, your gratitude part, your, you know, your, um, your prayer requests for that day. And, um, and the one that I use, it has, you know, teach me. There's a teach me section. So I love to put that because there's always something that I need God to teach me. One of the things I need him to teach me with the most is to not compare, you know, to uh -huh. to to lead my own path, the path that he has set out for me. And that's one of the things I write on there every day. It's just, you know, that's one of the things I truly need help with to teach me to be a better mom. That's definitely one of the ones that I put on there. A better wife, better wife and better mom and friend. So I, mm. I truly liked that map when I looked at that and saw that. And I thought, you know, that's great. That would be something great for my my husband who needs, you know, a little help to get started there. Little mm -hmm. prompts as they call it, writing prompts. I like, yeah, that's so. interesting. And and now I can see where you were you getting your ideas. I mean, when you're saying you write it down and yeah, that's what somebody's gone through and said, oh, okay, dear heavenly father, thank you for, I'm concerned about this people I'm praying for. Here's what's happening in my life. I need this. Um, amen. Thanks for hearing my prayer. I like this. This is cool. Okay. 
I like yeah. shopping on Amazon. That's my release, unfortunately. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate that one. Okay, Darcy, you got that prayer journal, put it in my cart. Okay. Um, I know you're going, Gary, did you have me on the show so that I could help you? Well, yes, kind <laughs> of. So I appreciate that. Tell me about, um, let's see, uh, a little bit more about journaling. What about, what's the easiest way to get going with a gratitude journal? You got about one minute. Is a gratitude journal helpful? Is that oh. something we should be thinking about? Oh, goodness. Yes, definitely helpful. Definitely helpful. And it's used by many therapists. And, you know, they, that's one of the things they're going to suggest. I would say, you know, find a quiet place, you know, find it, make it a habit, find a little place for you to go and make it a habit. Um, and always, always mark it with a date and time so that ah. you can go back and just kind of look through stuff. So, but definitely, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I do little stuff. Like I was so thankful that my one minute. blood pressure came back normal. Mm -hmm. So I just write that down for the day, you know, that, that meant a lot to me. It was something I had been praying for and I was very thankful that it was a good, good thing. Interesting. Um, okay. So small stuff. Um, so, cause I like that. I, I know I, that's to me, I just talked to a lot of people about, about gratitude journals and it seems to be the simpler, the better, you know, just like one thing or two things you're grateful for, for the day, because it does add up after a long time. And with, if you're trying not to repeat like more than once or twice a month, then there's a lot of things on your list, which I love that. Well, Darcy, I, again, I just really appreciate you coming on. I, I, um, I'm putting your link on my website. Her website is LaytonLane.com. So can you stay for the break and then talk to me for like another five or 10 minutes after? I would love that. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna, um, I wanna talk about late and lane a little bit when we get back from this really quick break. Uh, Darcy Piquet and I are talking about journaling, gratitude journal, um, and you know, dealing with anxiety and depression. I just love the way things are very practical. We're gonna keep talking about that when we get back, back with Darcy Piquet here on The Word on Wealth. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know where to find answers you can trust when you need them. Welcome to The Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush of GQ Law. We're here to help you build, protect, and transfer everything you've worked hard for with expert estate planning, trust administration, inheritance, and probate. Call Gary and the team at GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. Initial consultation or to talk with a member of the team, call Gary at 855-500-TRUST. GQLaw.com. You're live. Okay, welcome back. We are talking to Dorothy Fique, who is this incredible woman that I have met that helps basically with all kinds of questions that we have. And we've been, I've been peppering her with questions. Um, unscripted, yes. And I'm not apologizing because she's just really good at this stuff and I appreciate it. Um, Darcy's contact, you need to know a little bit more about Darcy. Okay, her website is called Layton Lane. That's L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N Lane, LaytonLane.com. And it talks a little bit about her. You can connect with her on Facebook and Instagram. And um, it, she's just a, uh, she's a mom. She's been through some really tough times that have taught her to rely more on God specifically so that she can then be refocused and move forward. And it's been, she's had a, an interesting journey. We've talked about it on past shows, 
And now I had her come on because I really love the way she talks about, about journaling and dealing with depression, and anxiety through writing things down. And I, she was only, she agreed to keep, stay on to the break so we can kind of finish up a couple of things, but I wanted um, you to talk a little bit more about the gratitude journaling and, and Darcy, I think if you could, or if you wouldn't mind is about, give us why, I mean, the journaling, I think to me, it's like, we should just all be journaling. And I think some people need more of a why, like, how does it help? And what does it do? Would you please address that for us? Sure. Okay. Well, you know, there's a difference between the different journaling. Obviously there's prayer journaling, like I was talking about, and then you're talking about gratitude journaling and therapeutic journaling also includes, you know, gratitude journaling. And it's more about, you know, writing your thoughts and emotions. It kind of enables you to express them, you know, when you're writing them down and it enables you to express them in a way that can help you work through some difficulties and move forward sometimes. And I think one of the most important things when starting, because it can't seem to be overwhelming, is just pick one topic that you want to explore. Like maybe it was a feeling, maybe it's some like resentment you have towards your mom, for instance. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to start writing, you know, going back and visiting your childhood and writing some things that really you need to work through. And this can be a little bit triggering. So I do say, you know, you need to do that. If it, if it becomes too much, if the emotions are too strong, you do need to stop writing and maybe seek help from a professional therapist. But for me, writing on the blog and finding that courage to actually share what I went through has been a very cathartic process. Um, it started very small back in 2017, and I'm still small. But when I get a email from somebody that said, um, you know, hey, you, your honest thoughts on what it's like to be depressed and still have faith in God is helping me in tremendous ways. You know, I, it just takes one person and I get really excited and it makes me motivated to just keep going. Okay. Um, because so, so many of us are out there that are just like, well, I shouldn't feel this way. I'm a Christian, you know, I should feel that joy, but that's just so not the truth. That is not, you can read the Bible and go not very far in the Bible and it's not shy on the hard stuff. You'll see the hard stories. You see David, King David, who sings praises in the Psalms in the next minute, you know, he's cried all night on his pillow. So, I mean, you know, for us to think that, that we need to always be strong and joyful and stuff is just, it's dishonest to ourselves. It's just not normal. So I enjoy writing about that kind of stuff and making people realize they're not alone. They're not alone in these kind of feelings. And it doesn't make God love you any less and it doesn't make you any less faithful. Charles Spurgeon is a wonderful example of that, the, the Prince of Preachers. Mm -hmm. He suffered with depression his whole entire life. They believed it was endogenous, I believe within. So this was before, you know, we had all the tests and the medicines and the doctors and stuff like that. So not really any known source except for it was a thorn he was given by God. Now you talk it before about, um, you've talked about, you know, how do you live? Because you're bringing up a couple of topics is like, you know, we feel kind of as Christians, like I'm not supposed to feel this way. You know, I, I have faith and I'm, I'm really doing the best I can. And yet I just, I'm not supposed to feel this way. And you're saying, just read the scriptures and you're going to feel, I feel that way too. I mean, it's, just like even with society, if you get really, you know, upset about, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. And there's so many things that are going wrong. And then we've got problems in high places and we've got problems in low places. And it just seems like, you know, all these, there's so much confusion on how you're supposed to think and act. And there's so much conflict. Um, and then we're thinking, oh my gosh, this is so awful. How do we get through this? And I always, I mean, this year we're in this really intense study of the old Testament. It's like, <laughs> just read the scriptures. This is not new. I mean, it's like, we, we can't even say, oh my gosh, this is a shocker. It's like, this isn't a shocker. What, what's happening in our world right now is just, it's totally, you know, it's been foretold and it's just happening again. And we're just going through the same process because we just don't do a good job learning about the past, you know, and because when we, we forget about the past, we're doomed to repeat it. And that's just what's happening now. Um, you had mentioned, um, and I really, I, I'm going a little off the journaling topic, although this is part of, I think what I like to kind of journal about a little bit is how do I live a 
this, this full life, if God doesn't remove my thorn, you know, I'm saying, you know, remove this from me. I, I, I don't want this thorn. It's kind of, it's a pain in the side or whatever. And yet we're supposed to just move forward. How do we, how do we live a faith-filled life if God doesn't remove our thorn? You know, when I, when, when you say those words and I think about it, then you start, you start singing in prison, you know, that's what I think about that. You, you come from within, you find God within, you know, you use his strength. It's not our strength. It's mm-hmm. his strength. You know, you can live a life of grieving and yet still be a very faithful Christian. You know, there's no okay. timeline, for example, you know, of that, but you know, that's what I think about. I think about all these women and that I follow on these Christian sites, a lot of them are living with chronic illness, like debilitating illness. And yet they still come to God every day, come to God in prayer. You know, they rely on him. And I think that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to rely on God, not ourselves. I don't know if I quite answered your question. <laughs> you did. No, you did. You did. And I think it's, it all goes back to his, his grace is sufficient for us to move forward and we're not supposed to have an easy, carefree life. And what does that mean? I mean, you know, re- literally, it's like what when you know what it's like, what do you want? Well, I don't want to have this issue here. Okay, what about this issue? You know, oh, wait a minute. We just have to kind of deal with what we've been given. I mean, the hand we've been dealt. I don't, it, it, we, we can't pray for a different hand because we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be deal with what we're supposed to deal and play with what we've got, with what we've got. You, so, Use the word persevere last time. Um, persevere. And that's not easy, you know, and I am not, I can tell you, I was not the best student when I went through my trial. Uh-huh. You know, I, I was just like, you know, if you've got lessons for me to learn, God, let's just do this through osmosis because <laughs> I was done with it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I always laugh about that because the last time that I went through the psychosis that I went through, I literally slept through it. It was quite strange um so maybe he actually answered my prayer in a very hilarious weird way there but um you know I just we've all been dealt different hands and I love I'm going to bring up Spurgeon again because he said he would rather suffering be his teacher because suffering teaches you a lot more than what it would be to live in the devil's palace I can't say that quite exactly um he said he would rather live in God's dungeon than the devil's palace Oh, okay. And I just, I really, I point back to him a lot. His, you can get on the Spurgeon Library and just read his sermons, and you will never learn more about one. Like it, he just focuses on one verse in the Bible on these whole sermons, and I mean, you will not learn more than reading those sermons. It is, he is amazing. You know, obviously he was amazing. He's still known. Mm-hmm. So, but um, you know, and thinking about like, let's say, let's think about Elijah. I read about Elijah recently. Elijah heard from God. Elijah was a prophet of God. He knew God. He called down fire. And then the next minute he's running in fear of his life. And he's in a, what they call a suicidal moment, you know, where he just laid down and wanted to give up. Take me Lord. And you know what God does? He comes and he gives them rest. He gives them an angel and he gives them rest. He gives them food, you know, and then he lets them rest some more. We are too hard on ourselves. God, the way he reacts to our shortcomings, to our life, he gives us more grace. He gives us the gift of grace. We need to learn to be able to give that gift of grace to ourselves when we're having bad times, when we're, you know, when we're depressed, we need to learn to do that better. So, and we need to learn to accept God's grace for that. I used to think I was disappointing God all the time because I wasn't getting better quicker. Mm -hmm. And that's not the truth. You know, I had a therapist one time that said, you know, you don't think that we have a very loving, loving, forgiving father who wants nothing better for you than to get better but it's on his time you got to remember everything's on his time not ours but if you know if i would have been immediately healed i would have missed out on two very long years of lessons but those (laughs) lessons and people that i got (laughs) um you know those it's transformed my life Mm -hmm. and i i wouldn't have gotten that if i wouldn't have went through you know what i went through so much so true sometimes so true and I appreciate you being so, so open and honest. I know that it, it's, it's hard on, on public radio. It's like, wow, this is, this is pretty Commits. intense. And I just really appreciate you sharing with that. Um, I think um, we got a couple of minutes that I want to do kind of a, a little checklist for people. So with our listeners, 
um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you just kind of get into a funk, you feel down, you know, there's, you're trying to figure out how to get through it. And sometimes the best way is just to get out a piece of paper. If you have a journal, do it. If you don't, or if you want to, if you're really into your cell phone, which a lot of us are, as you get out like the notes app and just write down your thoughts, write down how you're feeling. Right. And, um, you know, and, and I think because then writing is kind of therapy. I mean, for me, it's therapeutic where if I write, uh, I find if I have some intense things going on, I need a lot of time to write. And I, I, I look at my thing and I go, wow, I wrote a lot. Sometimes I'm just dictating it. So it ends up getting, getting quite long, but I always feel like it's very therapeutic for me because I'm actually talking it out and I, I'm not talking to a, a person. I'm talking to a journal and it's like, I'm always thinking about who am I writing to? Like, who's going to read this? I wonder, you know, and then, so you're kind of talking mm -hmm. through it and it's, it's, it, to me, it's very therapeutic. Wonder. That's why we talk about it quite a bit. Um, do you have um, any like last minute pointers for everybody? I can give you about a half a minute to kind of do a little wrap up or give us some, a couple, like maybe one more thing to think about um, so we can move forward with faith. Sure. Absolutely. I will be quick. Um, if, if writing is not your thing, like you said, or maybe you give it a try and it's just not for you, you know, find a different therapy, whether it's, maybe it's music therapy, maybe you enjoy singing maybe enjoy playing an instrument or, you know, just music. Music is wonders. Um, exercise, walking therapy, you know, there's there's something out there for you to help you cope or, you know, get through depression and anxiety. And on top of that, go get a checkup with your general physician and just be honest about what's going on, especially if this is something kind of new to you and you're like, okay, why am I feeling this way and not able to get out of it, you'd be surprised the links between nutrition and depression and anxiety. I appreciate it. That was wonderful, Darcy. Really appreciate the time with you here on The Word on Wealth. This is uh, Gary Quackenbush and Darcy Fiquay. Darcy, we love you. We really appreciate you taking the time, spending the time. I've got my notes and I hope my our listeners have been taking notes also. That was Darcy, you guys. Uh, you can get look us up on YouTube and you can listen to this interview again. This is Gary Quackenbush and Darcy Fequay. All right. Thanks, Darcy. Appreciate it. You've got questions. We've got answers. This is The Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush of GQ Law. Gary's here to give you peace of mind with expert estate planning, trust administration, inheritance, and probate. Call Gary to build, protect, and transfer your wealth. 855-500-TRUST gqlaw.com we're with craig smith of borderland your local source for cybersecurity. and greg what are you seeing today in terms of ransomware attacks well employers of all sizes are wondering which employee will it be who will be the one that clicks on that phishing email that brings my company to its knees with ransomware clicking on what seems like a safe email can allow hackers to load viruses steal your passwords and watch what you type ultimately stealing data and once this data has been extracted and backups encrypted, ransomware shuts down one computer at a time in your business. And by then, it's just too late. So, Craig, how can you help? Well, our team, our local guys at Borderland, educate your staff. They use state-of-the-art hacker training programs, and we set a perimeter around your business. Don't be shut down by hackers. Protect yourself for only a few dollars a month per employee. Call Borderland right now at 855-945-8100 and get a free consultation and quick quote on software services that help protect you and your small business. That's Borderland, 855-945-8100. We look forward to protecting you. You're not alone. Ask for the legal help you need. Call Gary and the team at GQ Law. 855-500-TRUST or go online and download Gary's free ebooks and videos. Read Gary's blogs. Call or click to request your free consultation or to talk with a member of the GQ team. That's gqlaw.com. 855-500-TRUST. Happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for being along here on The Word on Wealth. I'm always glad to have you on the show and listening along and um, taking part of it, whether you're actually calling in or listening or re-listening to this later on Facebook or YouTube. Appreciate it. I want to just a, a couple of things. We were just on the, the air with Darcy Fiquay. 
Uh, you can really you can watch this show again um, on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. It's GQ Law. Just go to YouTube, GQ Law, and find us. Um, a couple things with trusts. I just want to reemphasize every day of the week, I'm dealing with people with estate plans. And the, the amount of emotional intensity that we deal with sometimes is, uh, it's, it's not surprising to me, but it always reminds me how intense things are when someone passes away. And what I always like to remember is that there are ways of getting help, just like with your, your, if you have emotional issues or mental issues or, um, you know, your personal kind of development issues, there's always ways to get coaching and help. And that's one of the things that we provide at GQ Law is providing the coaching that's necessary to do a good job. Uh, many of you are successor trustees, maybe you're named um, in your parents trust to be the successor trustee, maybe you are acting as the successor trustee already, and it's not an easy job. You have to deal with your siblings or with other beneficiaries. You have to deal with creditors, with um, accounts, whether it's utility accounts or credit card accounts, insurance, all the, there's so many different things where when you take over for a parent, you're taking over their financial life for some period of time, whether it's gonna be several months or several years, it is a big project. And in the meantime, you want to make sure that you get it right, that you give out, you, you provide the required notifications and information that you're supposed to provide um, according to the California probate code. As a successor trustee, your job is to follow the law under the California probate code. So whether or not your people, you know, I, I know you might be thinking, well, well, Gary, um, trusts avoid probate. It's true. Trusts are designed to avoid and usually do avoid the probate process. However, living trust distributions and how they are handled is governed 100% by the California probate code. If you look in the probate code, you can figure out what your responsibilities are as a successor trustee. And it goes line by line and tells you what you're supposed to do. Most trustees don't read the probate code because it's not their thing. Okay, do I read the probate code? Oh yeah, I read the probate code because that's my job. So we know what we're doing. We know how the probate code, um, what the probate code tells you you need to do. We have a checklist of 28 things that a successor trustee is supposed to do to get their job done appropriately. Now, we know that if somebody passed away and they were collecting Medi-Cal because they... Maybe they got um, insurance through Obamacare with some subsidy or some reduction, and that might have been in the California, um, the um, where you go into the the market, right? Where you're you're getting your insurance and getting some deduction or whatever. Those deductions usually are credits or assistance that you get. That's through Medi-Cal, and the and Medi-Cal is reimbursable if you pass away without a trust. In other words, if you if if for some reason you you receive Medi-Cal because it was a subsidy on a health insurance premium that you had or some service that you had or some procedure or something that you know, at that time you couldn't afford it, well, Medi-Cal keeps track of that. And if you have a living trust, and if you have had received some reimbursement from Medi-Cal, or if it's your parents or something like that, have received in a reimbursement from Medi-Cal. Medi-Cal cannot come after a living trust and get assets from a living trust to pay itself back. It can do it through a will. If you have no will, or if you have a will, Medi-Cal can go to that estate and it's called the Medi-Cal estate recovery claim. And they can go and get reimbursed for any expenses that Medi-Cal covered while the person was alive. So if you even have any hint that that might be the case and whether it's the case or not, if you have a trust, that's one more reason to have a trust because if you have received any assistance at any time from Medi-Cal for any reason, you may or may not even recognize it or realize it. If your property is in a living trust, they cannot, this, one minute. Is, this is fairly new law, um, they cannot go after your trust estate to get money to reimburse for expenses that were paid under Medi-Cal. Uh, and I can go through many examples of this. We just don't realize it. 
getting a living trust is one of those things that you would put on your checklist. I mean, Darcy was just talking about that on the show today is make your to-do list and look at your top three and get it to where your one of your top three is going to be get a living trust and call somebody you trust. I'd be happy to do it for you. I'd love you to call me and we can take care of it for you. So get things taken care of, put us on your to-do list, move it up to the top. And when it gets close to the top, make sure you give us a call and let us help you out here at GQ Law. So good to have you along today. We'll be back Monday, same time, same station to uh, talk about tax problem solving and all those other things from GQ Law with attorney Richard Mathurin. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy Friday. Talk to you Monday. Tell a friend about the Word on Wealth, featured since 1995 with financial solutions attorney Gary Quackenbush, an expert in estate planning, wills and trusts, and tax problem solving. Gary is past president of the California Society of Tax Consultants. Reach out to us. The Word on Wealth team of financial experts is here to answer your questions and help you preserve your family's financial future. The information you hear on the Word. Thanks, bud. Information.